lung cancer is a very difficult staging system it took me a lot of time to prepare these slides so let's begin so we'll be discussing the hsc 8th edition and uh, recent updates so coming to the t stage we have t1 t2 t3 and t4 and the other special mentions are for tis which is carcinoma in situ which can be either squamous cell carcinoma in situ or adenocarcinoma in situ in adenocarcinoma in situ it is pure lepidic pattern lepidic means the tumor cells spread along the alveolar cells but however there is no invasion then it is called as in situ if there is microscopic invasion then it is called as t1 mi microscopic invasion is less than 5 mm depth invasion and the size of this should be less than 3 cm less than or equal to 3 cm now we'll continue with uh, the t staging t1 is again subdivided into 1a 1b and 1c t2 is divided into 2a and 2b there are no further subcategories of t3 and t4 the subdivision is based on size less than or equal to 1 cm is 1a 1 to 2 cm is 1b 2 to 3 cm is 1c 3 to 4 is 2a 4 to 5 is 2b less than or equal to 7 cm is t3 anything beyond 7 cm is t4 t staging is not just based on the size it is also based on direct invasion of adjacent structures so in t1 there is only involvement of lobar bronchus so this is trachea this is carina and this is main bronchus and the involvement of lobar bronchus confined if the tumor is confined to lobar bronchus that is t1 in t2 there is involvement of main bronchus and uh, so this is parietal pleura visceral pleura is adherent to the lung so there is involvement of main bronchus and visceral pleura if the bronchus is obstructed due to the tumor it can lead to atelectasis which means collapse of the lung and this collapse can also result in obstructive pneumonitis inflammation within this will cause pneumonitis so there are three things here which is involvement of main bronchus and visceral pleura which can result in atelectasis or obstructive pneumonitis then coming to t3 there is involvement of parietal pleura parietal pericardium phrenic nerve pancos tumor and the presence of tumor within the same lobe as the primary supposing this is the primary there is another separate tumor nodule within the same lobe of the lung coming to t4 all other structures other than this included in t1 t2 and t3 comes under t4 one important structure to remember is involvement of carina is t4 involvement of carina and trachea so what have we discussed involvement of lobar bronchus is t1 involvement of main bronchus is t2 and involvement of trachea is t4 trachea and carina is t4 i'll show you an image to remember this easily so this is the image of the mediastinum and thorax so coming to t1 there is involvement of lobar bronchus and t2 is involvement of the main bronchus trachea is behind this great vessels involvement of this main bronchus coming to t3 what have we discussed this involvement of the parietal pleura involvement of phrenic nerve here you can see the phrenic nerve and involvement of pericardium so this is the pericardium parietal pericardium and coming to t4 it is involvement of the great vessels that is ivc aorta or pulmonary artery and involvement of heart involvement of recurrent laryngeal nerve rln you see this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve this is right recurrent laryngeal nerve this is left recurrent laryngeal nerve then involvement of esophagus so once the trachea is involved trachea is like this trachea is involved then is of involvement of trachea esophagus and involvement of vertebral body
or if the tumor is present in separate lobe from the primary then it is t4 if it is present in the same lobe it is t3 if it is present in the other lobe it is t4 next coming to end staging nodal staging is a tricky one so it is from 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so coming to 1 is highest mediastinal 2 is upper paratracheal don't worry i'll show you all these stations in the image 3 is prevascular and retrovascular 4 is lower paratracheal it's highest mediastinal starts from below just from the thoracic inlet so this is highest mediastinal and so this is station 1 this is upper paratracheal and this is prevascular as you can see the great vessels that is uh, arch of iota ibc and pulmonary artery this comes under three prevascular and retrovascular stage four is lower paratracheal lower paratracheal is behind this retrovascular space then coming to station five and station six station five is subiotic that is between iota and pulmonary artery this is station five and station six is paraiotic which is along the ascending iota these stations are labeled from about onwards. Then coming to stage 7, it is subcarinal. Here we can't see the trachea because of the vessel, so I am just drawing this here. So it is subcarinal. Just below the carina is stage 7. Just below the carina is station 7. Then comes paraesophageal, just on the sides of esophagus. And 9 is adjacent to the diaphragm, close to the pulmonary ligament. In the next are 10. 11, 12, 13, and 14. These are easy to remember. The mnemonic hills. This is nothing but mediastinal nodes. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 are peribronchial nodes. That means they are close to the lung. H stands for hilar, I for interlobar. Between the lobes, inside the lobe, which is lobar, then within the segment, subsegmental, between segments, and as for segmental so these are peribronchial nodes and these are mediastinal nodes then comes our end staging n1 n2 and n3 n1 is 10 to 14 nodes n2 is all single digit numbers 1 to 9 lymph node stations n3 is involvement of n1 and n2 are ipsilateral n3 is involvement of contralateral mediastinal or contralateral hilar or contralateral scalene or supraclavicular nodes then coming to M staging M0 is no metastasis M1 is presence of metastasis M1A, M1B and M1C M1A is separate tumor nodule in the contralateral lung suppose this is the primary presence of metastatic nodule in the contralateral lung or the presence of separate pleural nodule or separate pericardial nodule or pleural or pericardial effusion m1b is extra thoracic site suppose this is the thorax involvement of liver or any structures like adrenal or brain mets is considered as m1b single but however single m1c is multiple extra thoracic mets It can be either in single organ or in multiple organs. Small cell carcinoma of the lung has a different staging system. It is same as uh, TNM, but however, it is again divided into limited stage and extensive stage. Limited stage is involvement of ipsilateral hemithorax. If contralateral hemithorax is involved or if there is extensive extensive involvement of single lung that is T3 and T4 with multiple nodules is also considered as extensive stage why is it called limited stage is because it can be included in single radiation field but if it is present on the contralateral side we cannot give both sides together in the during giving radiation so it is considered as extensive stage